Kai Havertz is officially a Chelsea player. 62 million pound signing, we're all excited, but there's someone in the dressing room apparently has got big problems with this move. Stay tuned. Welcome to the Kafka Zoo and welcome to the stats you need to know, Kai Havertz. Kai Havertz is officially a Chelsea player. It is great news, we've been chasing him for months. I've been reporting it throughout. I am almost sick and tired of saying his name in non-footballing names. But here we are. I can't wait to see him play in like 10 days. Let's bring it on. But before we start, apparently there's a Chelsea player that isn't too happy with the signing of Kai Havertz because it's going to impact his game time. We'll get into that, we'll cover that first, and then we'll go into the stats you need to know where we cover them. Passing, shooting, goal scored, assists from the last three seasons, how he has developed as a player, and you'll be an expert in regards to statistics on Kai Havertz. Stay tuned. Before we get started, do me a major, 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 massive, 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 massive favor. Subscribe to the channel, hit the like button, and more importantly, comment below. Are you happy with the Kai Havertz signing? Do you think Kai Havertz will get 10 goals and 10 assists this season? I personally think he might do. I really do. I think we'll get 10 goals and 10 assists in all competition from Kai Havertz this season. Make sure you do it. As we all know, Chelsea have been going crazy this window. Werner, Zayesh, Havertz, Saar, Thiago Silva. And the business might not even be stopping there. People are claiming, how are Chelsea doing this with financial fair play? This is an issue. No, it's not. As you can see over here, Chelsea are still in profit. If anything, we still got money to spend. So don't be surprised if we get ourselves a goalkeeper and maybe potentially a defensive midfielder. That's good news. But apparently, somebody in the dressing room isn't too happy. Who is it, mate? It's none other than the coach's son. I mean, Mason Mount. I apologize about that. I really do. I really do. I really do. But all jokes aside, Christian Falk is reporting that apparently... Havertz wants to buy a house. Werner feels like he's going to be playing a lot from the wing. And Mason Mount isn't happy about the signing because he doesn't feel it's best for his career. What, he's not going to play. He literally feels like he's not going to play. How do I feel about this? And is this true? Christian Flack is very reliable. I don't understand people shooting it down because it's Mason Mount. My argument here is, when I was telling you about the Kai Havertz deal, when I was telling you about the... Team over on a deal, it was coming from Christian Flack. So why now is it because it's a story that you don't like? Yes, you. I have to not report on it and tell you that and apparently he's unreliable and it's not true. That's nonsense. I'm not gonna lie to you guys. That is absolutely nonsense. Okay, Wright and Matt Law have both said Mason Mount is super happy. Mason Mount's father has tweeted that he is happy and then deleted it. But let's talk about this. Let's think about this logically. I like the player. I'm even going to go on to credit the player. So make sure you stay tuned. This is not me cussing the player at all. Let's get this straight. Mason Mount sees Kai Havertz come in, Rubens Fit, Kovicic, Jorginho, Kante, Gilmore. Six players all in that position. We're not forgetting Barkley. Okay. All of a sudden, he's thinking to himself, I'm not playing. Okay. What's going to happen to my career? Is that unacceptable? No, it's not. He needs to cover his own back. To say that he hasn't even considered what it would do to his position and maybe even wondered if he's unhappy. Look, it's as simple as this. He told his friend Tony, his friend Tony told someone, and then it just spread that Mason has reservations about being at Chelsea. It could easily happen. Where would Christian Flack get some kind of information to make it up? He reports on German news. This is just a big story. And the fact that people are saying he's making it up, I think is extremely, extremely harsh. I personally think this is not a big deal. I think Mason Mount is extremely happy at Chelsea. Mason Mount is going to have a bright future at Chelsea for years to come. Mason Mount is a phenomenal player. He can play multiple positions. He can add goals to his game and assists even more to what he already does. More importantly, Frank Lampard loves him. As long as the manager is Frank Lampard, there will always be room for Mason Mount in this team. And I believe next season, he's going to play a vital role in what we're going to achieve. But if this is true, Mason needs to wake up and realize where he plays. You play for Chelsea FC. At Chelsea, you're going to have a ridiculous amount of competition. If it's Havertz now, in three years time, it's going to be someone else. You need to step up and stay counted. This is where you get counted. 
Michael Ballack came in, Deco came in, and they were putting pressure on Frank Lampard. What did Frank do? He stepped up, was counted, and got goals even more than before for us. That's what it's what happens at big clubs. Look back at our history. Alex, Carvalho, Terry fighting for two spots. Deco, Balak, Lampard, Essien, Mikel, and Makalele fighting for a spot. Need I continue? Drogba and Anelka fighting for a spot. Drogba and Torres fighting for a spot. Players fight for spots. It's what good teams do. Courtois and Czech fighting for a spot. Guys, it's what big clubs happens at big clubs. And I think Mason Mount has got the mentality to fight for his place. And it's as simple as that. He will fight and I think he'll get a lot of game time next year. Because he offers intangibles that others don't. He offers his work rate off the ball, work, work possession. He is very good in possession. He can thread a good pass through. He scores goals. And he's a vocal leader on the pitch. You can tell. This team lacks that. And he... He's the manager's son. I've already said it. But enough of that. We're going to move on to the reason why potentially he's upset. We're moving on to my good friend Kai Havertz. In regards to goals, Kai Havertz has really improved and really impressed me. Three goals, 17 goals, and this year he got 12 league goals. Wow. Very impressive for a young 21-year-old. Deep that. Okay. He doesn't only get goals. He gets assists too. Eight, three, and six. That's decent. Guys, he's 21. What else do you want from a 21-year-old? Those numbers are fantastic. The fact that he was up there with the best Bundesliga players in the last three years at the age of 21, that means when he was 19, 20, and 21, for those of you that can't count. I got you, don't worry. It's a maths lesson as well as a transfer stats you need to know. I got you, though. He's fantastic. I can't wait to see this guy play. With his Langley style of being a lanky player, he's very tall. He's going to be good aerially, and we need to use that to our advantage. We lack presences, whether it's attacking corners or defending corners or set pieces. The fact that he won 2.7 aerial duels in his first season, that came down to 1.6 and then 1.4 now, is kind of promising. It means if he beefs up, bulks up a little bit, hopefully with the development in his body, because he's at that age where he's still going to be developing, we might have a very good aerial presence. This is excited. I'm not going to lie to you. He has been accepting a lot more responsibility on the pitch. 1.2 shots per game in his first season. Then 2.6 and then 2 this season. This highlights that this player likes to have a pot shot and he's not scared to take on responsibility. This is something that I think is going to be important for his mentality to be a successful Chelsea player. You need to believe how good you are and you need to be able to handle the big stage. You need to be able to be confident in your ability that I'm a top one in and it's gonna go top bins and you can't do nothing about it, big man. And I'm not gonna lie to you, I think Kai Havertz has that. His key passes have really been improving. 1.1 to 1 to 2 now. Two key passes per game is fantastic. The guy has been mirrored to be a similar to Mesut Ozil when Mesut Ozil broke out of Werder Bremen. But is he good enough to be doing it in the Premier League? I think he's going to need time to adjust. I think he's going to need time to climatize to the league. And eventually he will become one of the best players in the world in his position. And I'm very excited for that. I'm not going to lie. Look, he ain't perfect. I bring you the good stuff and the bad stuff. 1.3 to 2 to 2.5 of being dispossessed on the ball per times per game. This is understandable. He plays in the final third. He's a player that wants to make stuff happen and he will be dispossessed a lot. But is that moment of magic that's going to be integral? If we think about it now, in essence, imagine Neymar. How many times does Neymar lose the ball by attempting to dribble it past an individual and loses it in the final third? But when it does work, how impactful is it? You can't judge players off this stat. This stat is very harsh in my opinion. I think you could take a little bit from it, but it can't be the full picture. It's literally like your food, in it? You can't just eat your meat straight away and then leave the, everything else. You have to mix it up. You have to be responsible and smart. Unforced touches is the one I hate. And the fact that he averages 3.3 last season worries me. 3.3 unforced touches. Stanford Bridge Faithful will get back on him. I'm telling you, they'll get on his back if that happens in key times and key games. He needs to make sure he erases that slowly and rapidly out of his game. Slowly and rapidly. As soon as possible out of his game. Blech. What a stupid thing for me to say. 
I'm not going to do that second take again, but all jokes aside, it went from 1.1 to 2.2 to 3.3. Realistically speaking, is it because he's seeing the ball a lot more? Is it because he's in the final third a lot more? Is it because he plays striker a lot more? I don't know. I didn't watch every game of his development. But based on the statistics, I think we need to fix that. He has been completing a lot more passes than when he first came into the team. 36 to 56 to 45. That's, that's a good improvement. If you start deepening it and thinking about it in a considerable fashion, this number is going to increase, I think, to the 60s and the 70s at Chelsea based on the way we play, based on the way teams are going to park the bus against us and based on the attributes that I think he possesses of being the link-up merchant in the final third. He is going to be demanding the ball, threading through passes and in the long run, getting a lot of goals and assists. Be excited. It's all well and good attempting passes. It's another thing completing them. 81, 87, 85. I'm not worried about this. This guy knows how to complete passes. They're long passes, short passes. As you can see, his wide range of variety of passes exists. You can see this in the stats on the screen. His long passes are just as good as short, his short. I'm very excited about this player. I'm not going to lie to you. It is going to be a mouthwatering prospect to see him link up with all of our phenomenal attacking talent. But as I said, literally, we have got room to make more money and spend more on more players. We're still going to sell some midfielders, in my opinion. I think there's going to be one major exit. I do believe it's going to be Jorginho. I think the market for him has become a lot more harsh based because, because of all the implications with the lack of fans and clubs not having money. But I think they are going to generate it and they are, someone's going to pay the money for him, basically. That's how I feel. Roma or maybe Napoli might come and take him back. The Juventus are still linked. We just need to be patient and see who's in the market for the player. But I do believe we're going to get a keeper. There is some progress on Mendy, but I'm not going to report on that just yet. I want there to be some more concreteness before I bring it to you. It's a wrap. Kai Havertz is our player. Mason Mount is upset apparently based on Christian Flack, but then reports have come out it's not true. But this was the Kafka's view. I hope you enjoyed it. The news was for you. I hope the stats have filled you. I hope you guys are itching to watch Kai Havertz play. Hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, and make sure you tune in for all the videos on the Kafka's view. Peace out. Bye.